What is up, MFers? I hope you guys are having an amazing Tuesday. I think it's a Tuesday. I'm Ben Melican, if you don't know who I am. The host of Melican Fishing, my fish every single day, or at least six or seven days a week. Uh, I go out, I travel the country, I catch launches, and uh, occasionally I accidentally say a couple bad words and drink a couple beverages. Tonight, as you noticed from the title and thumbnail of this video, um, which are not clickbait in any way, YouTube has changed a few things up and are taking money directly out of my pocket and millions of other content creators like myself. So that might have some effect on the future of the content on this channel. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. Now, this is kind of a serious matter. You know, I'm a full-time YouTuber, blogger, and such, and vlogger, blogger, vlogger, of course. Um, and so it's, it's kind of a, a big deal when it comes to uh, what I'm going to do. Um, as far as my future, so we better uh, we better get a, a drink going for this very serious matter. The drink tonight is not going to be a beverage of uh, a, a barley beverage. It's going to be a frisky beverage. We're going with some Buffalo Trace bourbon tonight, mixing it with my favorite mixer of all time. A little bit of ice cube action. Now, the deal with the whiskey and the, the beer and everything, and all these videos, of course. Um, if you guys are kind enough, if you're fortunate enough. To use the super chats and send me some money, um, I will shout you out and take a sip of this drink. Um, so I'd appreciate if you do that. If not, totally understand. Um, but yeah, let's let's kind of dive into things. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of format of what the hell is going on with the YouTube uh, or this video, I guess, for that matter. Um, first off, we're going to start. I'm going to explain to you guys what I'm talking about with this this YouTube stuff. Um, second, I guess we'll kind of talk about the future and what that means as far as the videos go. And third, we're going to just answer some questions, talk about some some pre-spawn fishings with, uh, I know these are the same baits we had last time, but they're still sitting back here. I'm going to tell you guys a couple ways to go out since a lot of you guys are fishermen uh, and catch some some big old Slonchosaurus bass fish. If you uh, unfortunately have ice on your lakes, like we do, it's going to be a while, but that's okay. We're going to get into that stuff. Um, RJ Cook coming in hot with a $10 donation. I guess that's a good way to get things started. City to country, thank you so much. Shout outs to you guys. Let's take a sip of some some Buffalo Trace bourbon here, and uh, we'll go from there. Mm. This is, and I don't work with this company or anything, Buffalo Trace is one of my favorite all-time bourbons. Standing Canoes, thank you so much. Um, it's a little bit more of like a, it's not the, the smoothest bourbon by any means, but it has like a really nice oily, oaky profile. If you guys are bourbon drinkers, I would strongly suggest Drinking some of this. Now, it is no um, coincidence that I'm wearing a shirt with a gun. I'll say the G word on this YouTube video. There's a gun on my shirt, and we're drinking alcohol, and we might say fuck a few times. Who knows? We might do all sorts of bad things, but that's not even the reason why YouTube is stealing money from me. So let's dive right on into that. Daniel, thank you so much uh, for the money. Cheers to you, my friend. So let's talk about this. Um... So a lot of you guys have noticed, and you, you've, you've said stuff like, why the last few days have your comments, why can I not comment on your videos? I'm like, all right, well, that's odd. I've been making YouTube videos for, for two years and never had a problem with people commenting on my videos. So maybe these commenters don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're not signed in. They're not doing something right. So I, I look back, and I'm like, Comments are disabled on my videos, so first thought is, I'm an idiot, I'm not very smart, I don't know how to use computers and such, and so I'm like, I must have hit a damn button and screwed up the comments on my last couple videos, so I go back and I, I go to like a couple of the recent videos and I enable the comments, a couple minutes later, one, I did one by one, a couple minutes later, they're, they're enabled, so all is good in the world of commenting, so that was great. Well, I look back a little further. Comments are freaking disabled for all my damn videos besides like the last four or five. Let me tell you what that means after I say thank you to City of the Country. Demonetization sucked lately for YouTube. Maybe, not for me. It hasn't been demonetized, but we'll get into that. So here's the thing with comments. So when I put a YouTube video up, thank you, Chris Shoemaker, it's very important to me um, that it's ranked high in a sidebar on a main page. Um, so pe more people can see my videos because obviously the more people that see my videos, thank you, Midwest Slaunch Mob Hookset Nation. Promo code for Six Sense Lures is MF10. Save them, save money on the Six Sense Lures, the baits I use all the time. You can get them cheaper anywhere else. SixSenseFishing.com. 
And uh, yeah, if you want to go catch fish, we'll talk about the we'll, we'll talk about the catch the catch fishing a little bit later. The fish catching. Thank you, Lavitzstrom. So when I post videos on YouTube, I want them to get ranked highly on the sidebar, and that happens by a lot of different ways. But basically, SEO it's called is what boosts your videos, and that's YouTube's ability to rank videos based on. Um, viewer interaction, how much people like the videos and how many people have clicked on the videos. Basically, that's what SEO means when it comes to YouTube. So different ways you do that. Of course, you have a good title. You have a good thumbnail. Um, but other ways that are important to get that ranked a lot higher is watch time. However long people last watching on the video, um, how quickly people watch the video, of course. And a couple other very important factors um, are thumbs ups. And one of the most important is comments. So... When my comments are getting disabled, um, apparently, moving forward, that is going to be the case on every single video. I'm going to have to babysit them and have to ho hopefully be able to enable them one by one. When my comments get disabled and there's zero comments for however long, maybe forever, um, not only does that not allow me to do my favorite thing that I'm doing with you guys right now, and that is interacting with the Melic and Fishing community, which I have changed a shitload on my channel so I can take more time to interact with you guys because that's the most important thing to me. You guys are letting me live this lifestyle, letting me do this job where I go catch fish and make fishing videos and, and bitch about YouTube and videos apparently too. Um, so so that's a great thing. I, I love to interact with you guys. It's super important for, for me to give back to you guys, for me to answer questions, for me to tell you, hey, I'm going to come out to freaking North Carolina. You want me to go to South Carolina, Hampton? Uh, or New York, Liberty City, New York. Yeah, so that's an important thing for me. I want to give back to you guys as much as possible. Well, here's the damn problem. So when when I can't, not only can I not comment and reply back to you guys, but when there's zero comments on a video, then it doesn't get boosted. The video doesn't have a high SEO a lot of times. So when my video is not getting boosted, it's not getting viewed, well, that's the only way I make money off of YouTube is by ad revenue through Google AdSense. Now, before we dive into this a little bit more, I want to shut down the whole sentiment of, you know, you're going to get the pissed off redneck guy. It's going to come as, oh, that's a violation of the First Amendment. No, it's not or the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. That's, that's not a violation of your freedom of speech. It is not. YouTube is not a public company. If I want to go out and make do what we're about to talk about in the street, I can totally do whatever you want to as long as it's legal. YouTube can decide whatever the hell they want to do. So I understand that completely. I'm not mad about that. If I work for a company and they don't want that to go public or they don't want a, a specific action to be public, then they have every right they want to shut that down. So let's talk about the reason this is happening. So I looked into it a little bit more and I got an email and it had to do with minors on videos. Thank you so much, KJD Boy 858 I would love to come back to San Diego. I was just talking to a friend today about going to San Diego and doing some more fishing. So hopefully I'll make it out there in the near future. That would be a lot warmer than it is right now. So I get this, this email, or I guess this is just like a statement from YouTube. It says, starting February 20th, 2019, we began temporarily disabling comments on certain videos. Thank you, Ryan Studer. I need a sip of, of Buffalo after that. This was part of our series of actions to protect minors. Kayla Gay, thank you so much. YouTube is getting stupid, apparently. In addition to our normal protections, we have taken an aggressive approach and temporarily disabled comments on tens of millions of videos that may include minors. Thank you, the PB dad. Zark's still the man. Just haven't had time to go fish with each other, but maybe soon. We don't take this action lightly. We know comments are a key way creators connect with our community, just like I just told you. But this was an, an important step for child safety on YouTube. While the creators of these channels and their videos may have done nothing wrong, we're taking an aggressive approach on content that may endanger minors. Check back for updates. You can learn more on our help community. So basically what the problem is on YouTube is videos with minors in them are getting inappropriate comments by random people um, all the way to like straight up sexual predators, which is obviously a giant, giant problem. So I'm not saying that that's not a huge problem. It's not something that I'm not against, obviously. Um, the problem with that is, obviously I love to go fish with, with my main man, the dad master. Look at his cute little, 
little picture from school this year. God, he's a stud. Woo! Anyways, um, the problem is <laughs> I have like fifth, not maybe more than fit, maybe twenty videos with one of your favorite actors, the Dab Master, that appears on the channel, and I have four hundred and fifty total videos on YouTube, or close to four hundred fifty. So. 15 to 20 of those videos out of 450 have a minor in them and YouTube was too lazy to like actually look and see if there was a minor in the rest of them. They just disabled all comments on all videos. So I don't know what that means going forward as far as, you know, a lot of people get turned on and brought to Millican fishing based on past videos um, that I've never seen a video that I posted yesterday or the last week or the last year even. Um, so if those old videos don't get boosted, we're going to slow down on how many new MFers we got coming to the community. It's frustrating. Um, so I've contacted them. I've contacted my network that I work with. that kind of manages my channel a little bit. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, this is a problem. Um, I totally understand if you want to take comments off of my videos with the dab master, which by the way, you guys are always for the large majority, extremely respectful in the comments section. Um, so that's frustrating. Super, super frustrating. Um, it's not like I've built a channel around freaking like the, the kid, the kid that un unwraps toys and shit like that, or something like that, where every video is in there and you could legitimate, legitimately have, um, child predators watching these videos just to see these children. It's not like that. It's, it's frustrating that YouTube was, was sort of lazy to the point where they, they aren't actually looking in more into this issue. And so comments have been disabled on a lot of my past videos. I'm, I'm working as quickly as possible, not for my bank account, but so I can get back to getting back to you guys and, and replying to you guys as soon as possible um, to get those videos, comments back enabled. For now, hopefully, hope to God, they allow comments. So that's frustrating. That's where I'm at with everything. That's why we're drinking some Buffalo Trace bourbon this evening. What's up, Andrew Norby, my man? Um, Trevor Johnson, Dive Master is the man. So let's uh let's kind of dive into this a little bit more. You guys, um, I'm gonna answer some of your questions on uh on here. I got some, and then we're gonna kind of get into fishing. This is a fishing channel. I don't like to bitch and complain. I don't like to be negative. I just want to I just want to let you guys know why YouTube kind of is boning me right now and, and what's going on with that. I'm not just not very happy with it. I haven't ever really been hit with the whole demonetization thing. And honestly, I think a lot of channels lie to you guys um, about being demonetized for this video or that video. A lot of times guys are just trying to make you feel sorry for them. So you go buy more of their whatever. But this is legitimately happening. If you want to go make sure you go, go try to comment. On other stuff. Hey, G Money Strong, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for sending that. Ginger Mang, what up? Appreciate you. Thanks so much for sending the donations. Again, if you guys are watching, if you're you're generous enough to send some money on Super Chat, I will shout you out and uh, take a sip of this Buffalo Trace bourbon, which I am not sponsored by, but I should be. Damn it. So it's kind of frustrating. Um, it's it, it. You're making a stance as YouTube to try to protect minors that are on the videos, which makes sense, but we're not doing anything um, really as far as doing anything about disabling the comments in the actual videos that might include swearing or videos that include in inappropriate material. A lot of time those videos, whether they're getting monetized or not, YouTube's allowing them to be posted. It's not like YouTube's doing anything. The reason that this is happening is because companies that pay money to put ads in these videos have apparently seen some comments that are uh, detrimental to minors. So I understand that. And if you say fuck a lot in your videos or you have guns in your videos, this is, by the way, this is a Black Rifle coffee shirt. I got this in the mail today. Shout out to Black Rifle Coffee, the best coffee. Um, American coffee from veteran-owned company. Go check out Black Rifle Coffee. They support the channel. Go support them. Rob Ames, I'd love to come to Table Rock Lake. Hopefully get there this year. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at with everything. I was probably in the middle of a thought and just shut down because my brain doesn't work very well, but I mean, it's, I've only had half of a, a, like a third of a glass of Buffalo trace. So it's not even the booze. I'm just dumb. Chris Beelan. Thank you so much. I'll try to keep kicking arse. 
Maybe you think Chris is British. I like when people say arse. That's kind of funny. Um, ever think about fishing Northern Alabama? Actually, potentially in a couple weeks. Um, notice me, please. Sorry, I did not notice you. The Gaming Bronco 8805. You fall Alabama. I hear great things about you fall. Central California. Well, we're not talking about uh, anything that has to do with the YouTube stuff. So let's move on to the fishing stuff. I mean, fuck. Might as well. Sean Price, thank you so much. Stockton and Pommy, absolutely. Hey, hit me up on uh, Instagram, Sean. I need to just keep you fresh in there. I get lots of messages on Instagram, and I, I'm going to go fish with you. So make sure you keep it fresh so I can I can uh, get in touch with you so we can get down there. I want to get down in like the next month or so. Robert Witten, thank you so much. They do need to ban the foul people in the foul comments and punish them and not me. That's kind of what sucks is I can't control who watches my videos. It's literally public. I can't make my videos so only – the proper MFers, which were, that's not who I want. I want the improper, imperfect MFers. I don't want child molesters in the, in the audience, obviously, but it's frustrating. I can't control who's watching and commenting on my damn videos, YouTubes. And what sucks is, like I said, it's a private company. They can do whatever the fuck they want, and I can't do anything about it. Like, if they want to not have you guys be able to comment anymore, then that's their prerogative. It's, they literally provide the platform. Um, and there's no other platform that can monetize what you want to do and promote quite like YouTube. YouTube's the second largest search engine in the world. It's a very, very large, very important um, broadcasting system. There's no other real way to monetize your stuff except like Twitch, which is not really a fishing thing um, yet. Maybe someday, but not yet. Okay, I need to get on this. T Tackle box, Tim. Thank you. Grow the beard. Drink one for me. I'm, I'm, I don't know. This is just me being lazy. Thane Chapman, thank you so much. Appreciate it, man. Charlie Gray, hit me up in the Inner City Launchpad. You won't be disappointed. Buffalo Trace, Ken Fist, thank you so much. I will take a drink for you guys. America, that's right. Any tournaments this year? Absolutely. We're going to uh, turn to the Mississippi River. I was the Mississippi River two days ago, so you guys will be seeing a video of that very soon. Chris Stewart, Kankanee River in Illinois for some nice small jaws. I would love to do that. Okay, let's get into talking some fishing a little bit, and then uh, some questions to answer um, on, let's see, the YouTube community post. So I posted today, let you guys know that I was going to be doing this live stream. Um, so be always be checking that. Um, I think it just shows up as like recent YouTube posts. It's somewhere in like your main screen, your page. So check that out. That way you guys can get some questions in or over on Instagram at Millican Fishing. I'd love if you'd give me a follow. And uh, that way you guys, uh, a lot of times I didn't do it today, but a lot of times I'll, I'll provoke you guys. I'll, I'll ask you guys for questions that you want answered. And I'll shout you out by name that way as well. For now, live chat, uh, super chat that is. I'd love if you guys could donate some MF and money since apparently my MF and channel is getting MF and shut down. Probably because I'm going to say gun and fuck a lot with, with my booze. Sorry, this isn't probably very appropriate for younger audiences. But really, I'm not that sorry. All right, so let's uh, let's let's get down to answering some questions. You guys are all saying where I should should uh, go fish. I, I love you for doing that. It's kind of hard though for me to like keep up with that when you're saying come to this lake, come to this lake. I'm like I've never heard of any of these lakes for the most part, and I know a lot about it. No, my my channel not getting shut down. It's not just can't comment. Hope I hit 300k. We're gonna do that this year, some bitch. You bet. M Jones with the biggest. Donation of the night. We got a twenty dollar. Thank you, M. Jones. He wants to know pattern breaks on crankbaits. Pattern breaks on crankbaits, like or not? Do comment again. Um, I don't know what that means. You don't have to donate or anything, but explain a little bit what you mean. Um, fresh H two O fish. Fred Frez Fresh two O fishing. You'll probably say my name wrong. No one says it right. I thought it was clever. Respect to the dad master. I like that. Thanks for donating. I really appreciate you guys. All right. No, I did not watch the new Mikey Balls video. Um, oh, Bass Boy Fishing, another $20 donation. You guys are fucking awesome. Thank you. Well, oh, God, you guys are trying to get me drunk now. William, thank you. All right. That was weak. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. You guys probably think I'm an alcoholic. I've literally been drinking almost exclusively on these live streams which is twice a week, and we do drink a lot. RJ Cook, thank you so much. I'd love to get up in New Hampshire. It's supposed to be awesome, beautiful up there. Harry Fish, thank you so much for the donation. I'd love to get Mrs. Millican fishing up in the Northeast. Um, 
she's originally her family's from Boston area. And so I, I would love to get up in the Northeast area, travel up there. It's supposed to be a beautiful, beautiful country. So hopefully we can plan a trip sooner rather than later. But let's answer some questions. Kobe Walker just donated the most. $25. I will take your money and I will go buy some whiskey and maybe make keep making videos because apparently I, I'm not allowed to have comments on them anymore because I did a terrible thing and took my son fishing. All right. Okay, Nathan Bruns, my man that I'm going to take fishing. He was the original winner of the Melican Fishing Apparel Contest, which, by the way, is going on until March 1st. If you get, go get go to melicanfishing.com and pick up a, a merchandise, a hat, a shirt. This is not my shirt, but a shirt in general. Um, anything. Anything you buy enters you one time for a chance to win an all-inclusive paid fishing trip with myself. That'll be announced March 1st. So go over there, get that for now. Uh, Andrew Olson, thank you so much. Any comments on the smallmouth bass like – I ran into you there and wanted to apologize for fishing your spot. Dude, you're, you're totally good. I, I have total respect for anyone that wants to get out fishing. Um, that'll probably be a discussion for moving forward. It was super nice to meet you. I always love meeting you at Meffers out um, on the water, of course. You guys didn't do anything wrong. I would just like to help educate the community, um, maybe in a more positive manner than my Instagram post um, kind of, I guess, displayed um, or portrayed. But – I just want to know that you didn't necessarily do anything wrong. We'll, we'll kind of talk more about that moving forward. Green Valley Swatch is coming soon. Yes, we also need to get some ice off the damn lake. So, Nathan Bruns, let's get to his damn question. Since I'm primarily a bank fisherman, Nathan says, I'm always up to break down lakes from that standpoint and what you try to look for. All right, so bank fishing. This is too broad, but maybe bank fishing is simpler than what we're trying to make it as a lot of times. You know, one of my favorite things to do when bank fishing – this is going to be extremely broad, but I'm not, I don't have time to break down every single thing from the bank. But one of my favorite things to do from the bank is look for bank cover that's really tough to get to. Spots where other people either can't cast to because you can make a, a more accurate cast um, or spots that are just a pain in the ass to get to because the bank's steep, because there's grass on the side. I like a good pair. Uh, we call them shitting boots. They're like the boots that come almost knee high and, and the rubber or waders. So you can get places uh, that other guys can't necessarily fish and make repetitive casts at different angles um, into that cover, around that cover, and let your bait soak. The good thing about being on the bank, the, the advantage you have on the bank over a boat fisherman, I don't care if you have power poles. I don't care if you have an Ultrex. I don't care if you have an anchor down. On the bank, you have total control over where you're at. Um, and there's no waves rocking you, obviously. You can soak your bait and fish more thoroughly and more different angles than any other person that's on the water in whatever boat that is. And that's something you always need to take advantage uh, take advantage of to catch more fish. I hope that made sense. I hope you guys can think about that a little bit more from the bank. Say fuck every time you cast. That would be a good video. Esteban, once again, still love your name. Um, you're welcome, Nathan. The PB Dad asks, pre-spawn and spawn, favorite baits, and how to set them up. Again, very, very vague. Um, let's go with a couple pre-spawn favorites. So when the ice comes off, this is going to be a guy I throw a whole lot. This is a six cents. Um, this is this is the Quake. It's the uh, it's the regular Quake 70, so the one with BBs in it, or the Quake Thud, lipless bait from six cents. Grass pattern. Um, I love chatter baits. My homemade chatter baits are badass. We're going to be making a lot more tackle coming up in the near future. Do you guys want to see me make some tackle making videos? Um, you're about to see something cool on my channel in the next couple of days. I'm really excited to share with you guys. Thank you, Sean, so much. Take a shot. Okay. Appreciate you. Um, um, around the spawn, um, I really, really like fishing not for bedding fish. It's a pain in the ass to catch them a lot of times. And in Nebraska, we have such a short spawn season. It's so different. You might go to a lake when it should be setting up perfect and you don't see a single one. Uh, you might go to a lake and randomly two weeks after you think they should be done, there's a big bass sitting on a bed. So it's really tough to fish for them. My favorite thing to do around the spawn is to blind cast like a uh, stick bait worm. I really like that Nico rig um, because we don't have a lot of clean water either. So you have to kind of fish areas where you know they're spawning, but not necessarily looking for them. So that Nico rig sits straight up and down on the bottom with a stick worm, has a lot of quiver shake. You put the nail weight in the head, um, fishing that works extremely well. Another bait that I really like around late pre-spawn into the spawn is a swim jig, black and blue swim jig with a big thumper craw trailer. For whatever reason, it gets bit super, super, super well. So keep that in mind. Um, Hateful Joey says, tips and lures to throw when the ice first comes off, 
I'm talking water still in the 30s. So these are my three most, most liked comments so far. These are all three extremely good questions. So this will obviously be kind of backtracked a little bit. So this will be coming before we get to the point where we're throwing those spawn baits, even those late pre-spawn and, and pre-spawn baits in general. You pretty much got to keep it simple. Um, and if it's not working, you got to move around. So three different ways that you can target those fish when the ice first comes off. Um, the first way I really, really like to look for is uh, any type of wind blowing it. Not too much wind, but a ripple. Hope You're hoping for those days when the wind's blowing like 10 miles an hour and you're getting on the bank, blowing in. I've caught fish as the ice was literally coming off the lake on a jerk bait in those situations. Um, things I really like to look for as far as cover is riprap. Um, rock banks that are close to where the fish can just move up. Um, the one thing about these times of the year when that ice first comes off and then towards the end of the year when the ice is about to go on is those fish's feeding periods shrinks up dramatically. So unlike the summertime where they can feed all day long because their metabolism is going like crazy, they have a slow metabolism during that super cold water period. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because once you figure out when they're feeding, you can usually load up, especially if you hit something at the right time. But a lot of times, obviously, that's going to have to require you to be much more patient. You're going to have to wait for those times. You might fish for eight hours and not get a bite. And the next 15 minutes, you catch six or seven big ones. It's just how it works when the water's cold and they have a super short feeding period. So first method would be to throw a jerk bait. I like about a five to eight second pause. I'm not patient enough to wait much longer than that. Although I have caught fish on 15 to 30 second pauses. I don't like to do that though. Aaron, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Where did you get the term slaunch? Because I just heard KVD say it, and white is the best color in the spawn, right? Um, no, not necessarily. So um, I got the, the term slaunch, was just kind of something we said, myself and the Zark, and then it really caught on because someone said it pissed him off when I said the word slaunch. So I made a couple of videos where we said slaunch as many times as we possibly could, and then it just kind of stuck from there. Um, white is a good color to fish on beds because you can see it, um, you can see when that, that bait's sitting there, it's hard to see those fish a lot of times from a long ways away. A lot of times you have to be way far away to get fish to bite when they're on beds and you can see your bait better that way, but not necessarily the best bait for fish to react. It's, it's solely white is solely in my opinion. So you can see the bait on the bed, which is important. A lot of times, a lot of times though, if, especially obviously if you can't see them, white is not the best bait to throw because you're not going to get bit by any cruisers that are just there to eat, or you might be able to trick Holy shit, Tom, Todd Linner, thank you so much for the donation. He just donated 50 bucks. We got a leader in the damn clubhouse. Thank you, Todd. God, I appreciate you, MFers. It's badass that you do something like that. All right, so back to the baits right when the ice comes off. Jerk bait number one. Um, number two is a lipless bait like I just showed you guys. Fishing it super slow on the bottom. Short rips, pauses. Um, if you can find grass, uh, green grass. Green grass is absolutely key. Spots where the sun is hitting it all day long, they're definitely the only active fish when the water's in the 30s is going to be where that sun is hitting it all day long. And don't be afraid to go in two, three feet of water sometimes, especially if you have a shallower lake, as long as you're just working that 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 uh, lipless bait right over the top of the grass, work it super slow. Bait number three um, is going to be a dragon bait. Either if the water's a little bit muddy, has a little more stain, I like a, a jig to drag really, really slow in the same areas where you're throwing the jerk bait. If it's clean, and you're fishing a clean water lake, I really love my magic tube, the smoke purple tube, drag on the bottom. So those are my three options. Let's get to a couple more questions. Um, some of the same ones. Best setups to have for people who only have a few rods to work with money-wise. So you definitely, I would get three rods. Here's what I would get. I would get like a seven foot three medium heavy, and that way you can drag with that rod um, you can throw football, like you can throw jigs and textures with that rod. You can throw spinner baits. You can throw chatter bait if you want to. You can flip. You can throw a frog. Well, we'll get into that. Don't not a frog. Won't won't do that. We'll we'll put fluorocarbon on that rod, like 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. Second rod, we'll we'll go with our top water rods. So this will be again like a seven foot to seven foot three, and we're gonna put braided line, 50 pound braided line. It's a little bit light for super super heavy stuff and frogs, but. You can throw all sorts of top waters on that. Uh, even spinner baits, you can throw on braid if you want to. Um, but that's our top water rod and our flipping and, and punching thick grass rod. And then number three, um, something for moving baits. I like a crankbait rod. So like a seven foot medium power, medium action. So a slower, like a moderate action crankbait rod. 
throw like 12 or 15 pound fluorocarbon. You can throw jerk baits, crank baits. You can even throw chatter baits if you get the right rod. Like the MF or series can be very, very versatile. You'll be able to do a lot of things with it. Um, yeah, that's the three setups that I would definitely get. Uh, as far as reels on those, seven to one gear ratios on the flipping, dragging, um, top water rods, and then six to one gear ratio, somewhere in the six speed reel for the moving bait rod. Okay, um, plans for the new boat. Uh, I'm going to use it. All right. Um, fishing, let's see. Um, main topic, porn stashes stash. That is a great statement. Okay, next question. Um, update on the MF for fishing rods. Still looking at July. Late summer release on those. Can't fucking wait. It's going to be awesome. River Walleye, we got some shit coming for you guys in about a month. Oh, my God. Um, is it even worth fishing ponds in the water temp is mid-30s? Again, that's tough. It's tough. But use those three ways I just told you. Get out there and, and try those. If that's not working maybe move to the next one. Um, a lot of times it can be really, really tough until the water gets up into the high 40s, into the 50s. Robert Raider, thank you so much. Keep shaking the lakes and rocking the docks. Pow, pow to you, Robert. Thank you, my man. Mm. That is good. All right. Pre-spawn jig fishing. Yep. Glide baits in the pre-spawn. I kind of shy away from glide baits until we get to the spawn and post-spawn. You need more active fish to, to eat a bait that's tracking that far side to side, um, in my opinion. So we'll kind of get there. Heidi, thank you so much. I appreciate you for watching so much. I, I seriously do. Me and Porn Stash have gotten you back into fishing. That's amazing. Seriously, so good to hear when watching my videos gets people interested in fishing or it gets people that have been, you know, kind of haven't done it since they were younger back into doing it again. That's my favorite thing ever. Seriously, so good to hear that. Thank you. This one's for you. Mm. All right, so let's uh, let's get back to some questions from you guys. We're going to wrap this up in a couple minutes here. We're getting kind of long. Um, let's go fishing with Richard Gene. People tell me that all the time. Maybe I should hit him up. How often do you specifically target for northern pike? And have you ever thought of going to Canada for fishing? Yes, absolutely. Ian Davis, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Mm-mm. Mm all right, personal best northern pike caught 30, 36 inches. Not that impressive, but it is what it is. I don't really care. Um, go with Ike and Ellie. I'd like to do that at some point. What happened? Um, come to Texas. What happened to the Cast King thing? Um, all the reels started to fall apart on me, and so I didn't want to promote a shitty product to you guys. That's all there is. Um, when are you going to announce the tournament date? I don't. I'm going to set the trip plan. Yeah, I can't wait to have all you guys there. Still haven't really even had time to get to that because I, I don't want to just hold like a tournament. I want to have like a beer garden and like a kids fishing thing, like a concert. I got a lot of shit on my mind that I want to do for that when I host my tournament. So I don't know. I hope it's in like two weeks, but it's likely going to be at least in June. I want, it's not going to be in two weeks. I'd like it to be in two weeks is what I'm saying. Um, just want to say, I watch all your videos and I've learned a lot of stuff. Thank you, A Fishing Project. Um, just about a couple cast kings. They might work for you. Who knows? The West Hills Life. What do you think about Carolina Skiffs building custom bass boat out of a J14 on my channel? That's badass. That's super cool. And thank you for the donation. I really appreciate that. Seriously. I honestly don't know much about Carolina Skiffs. Um, Met some people actually at ICAST last year that worked with Carolina Skips just randomly. And it seemed like a really, really good company that they knew a lot. Building a custom bass boat, that's that's sweet. Super jacked about that. Um, oh, one more thing. While we still have 592 people watching this live stream before I get out of here, I want to let you guys know again, if you didn't see my video earlier this week, I'm having a, a booth at the SWAT meet on Saturday in Omaha. That's at Concordia Junior and Middle School on like 156th and Fort. So what it is basically the swap meet is like a giant garage sale for outdoors people of all types, fishing, hunting stuff. So it's like you just go and you go around a booth. There's a bunch of shit. There's a bunch of good stuff, cheap stuff, stuff that's hard to find, all sorts of stuff. Um, you, you like even like jerky and snacks. And anyways, I'm going to have like a shitload of baits for sale, merchandise for sale um, for like way cheaper than you can get anywhere else. 
um, be giving a lot of stuff away at that. I'm selling my John boat. I'm selling my old tracks. I've got a lot of stuff for sale. Yes. I'll have hoodies, um, work on the boat name still, but yeah, come, come see me there at the swap me. I think it's $5 to get in the door. Totally worth it. Um, come to my booth. I'll, I'll make up for that $5 pretty quick and how much money I'll save you buying my stuff. Um, Florida slaunches. Yes, there are Florida slaunches. Correct. Would you come to South Carolina and fish a big catfish room? Man, that's a long ways to go. I appreciate it. Um, I'll think about it. If I'm in the area, I'll think about it for sure. Slaunch City Outdoors. Colorado Slaunch Hunter here. Let's meet up in April. I'd love to get to Colorado. Let's freaking do it. Um, a couple more minutes here. I'm going get, to keep getting back to you guys since apparently I'm not allowed by YouTube to uh, answer questions um, on other other comments. So let's let's answer a few more. Why are you getting rid of the old tricks? Because I have another one. Um, so I'm going to just give it really cheap to somebody. How about that? Um, you ever get sloshed out? No, I can't. I cannot, I cannot get sloshed out. YouTube stealing my money. Sue the pricks. I'm going to. I'm going to sue the YouTube. They don't have any money. I should easily win. Where's the drink? I donated. And Minnesota sportsman, you might be lying, but I'll drink anyway. Mm. And that for boxer shorts. My man, Joseph. That's a good idea. Let's see what Miss Melican Fishing thinks about that. Probably doesn't like them. Um, but we do have some, we're working on some like basketball shorts since, you know, that's what I wear all year. And I got some on right now, the Melican Fishing sweatpants that have not been released yet, but will be very soon. Christopher Gibbs, thank you so much for the donation. 20 freaking dollars. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Am I ready for top water? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, yes. Yep. MF for decals. Those are coming. It, that's the newest product that will be released in the next like a couple days, hopefully. Do I do any deep sea fishing? Just did it a couple weeks ago. Miss Melican Fishing. Check out the videos from the Costa Rica. Slammer. You bet. Drop the rods. I'll pay a big donation. I don't know what that means, but thank you. Um, 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 I need help getting a sponsor for high school fishing team. Don't know what I can do for you there, but um, keep keep trying your hardest. Maybe you learn how to fish too and uh, provide value to companies and they'll they'll work with you. Um, okay, good. People want the Melican fishing basketball shorts. Why are YouTube taking your money? You're gonna have to go back, Tarek, and look at what happened earlier. Satchel! Is that the same satchel I fished with? It better be Code Red Outdoors. Uh, I, I made a video that's coming out the next couple of days, and it was with another guy named Ben. And we didn't want to do Ben and other Ben. And my buddy also that I met was kind of calling him different names. And one of the names he called Ben was Satchel. So Satchel kind of just stuck, and it's a cool name. I wish I was named Satchel, like Satchel Page. And so we called him Satchel. And that's how, that's what we're going to, you're going to see what's coming up. Satchel caught the biggest perch I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be cool videos. Hat is dope. Thank you. Go buy one. I'd love that. And if you do, I'll give you a trip to fish with me, maybe. Um, MF for Satchel. We want a product Satchel. I see what you're saying. I like that. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. I just want to let you guys know, if you don't see comments on my videos, like if, if they're disabled, let me know the best you can. Send me a message, whatever. It's bullshit. YouTube's a fucking joke a lot of times, but they have a right to be because they're a private company that provides a platform for me to make these videos for you guys. Um, I am making some changes with my channels in the future here, with, with my channel in the future here. Um, I'm going to broaden my, my content to a lot of different um, platforms. And uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that, I think, on my next live stream, which will probably be Friday um, it'll be sometime in the next three or four days. I got some exciting announcement to make um, regarding how my content is going to be spread across a bunch of different platforms. I'm so freaking excited. Um, super proud of one of my good buddies. Um, it, it's going to be good stuff. But yeah, thank you so much um, for you guys. Yes, podcast. It's going to be part of it. But seriously, love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you for everyone that donated some money. And I'm going to go have some dinner with Miss Melican Fishing. Finish this beautiful drink right now. You guys stay positive. Enjoy your night. Um, I can't wait to give you more content very, very soon. Dayton Gaff, Graf, thank you so much. I'll catch you guys very soon. I'm out of here. Peace.